How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today is part three of our CNC horizontal milling machine project. So part one, we moved the machine into the workshop. Part two, we started stripping it down. It's been in this state for about six months now. It hasn't gone any further. So I knew when I started this machine, it was gonna be one hell of a project. Time is my biggest enemy in here. Pretty much the week after I got this machine stripped to the point it is, my workload just increased significantly. I do not have any time spare to go and spend on a project like this. I do have many other projects that should have been in front of this one. They're actually machines that I could use in here on a daily basis. It's got to the point now where it's, it's time to make the hard decision on what I'm gonna do with it. Now that we have the two CNC machines, we've got the little Extron and the big Mazak. The Mazak and this machine um, are about the same size and capacity. I don't really need this machine anymore because what I was going to achieve on this machine, I can achieve on that one. Another thing that would have been very desirable on this particular mill was if it had the extendable quill in it, like your horizontal borer style machines. There are machines out there like it, but this one doesn't have it, and it sort of just limits what you can and can't do. This machine is in my way. We are doing a big workshop shuffle. I need to expand the workshop. I did think about sending this somewhere else to be stored, but the cost to get someone to come in and move this and then pay somewhere for it to be stored as I don't have any available sheltered area around here to store the machine, just wasn't gonna be worth my while. So today's the day we are going to get rid of it. Not all is bad, not all is lost. At this stage, this machine doesn't owe me, well, really anything. For me to get rid of the project is not a big issue. I did go through the process of working out the drivers, the hydraulics, everything I would need to convert this machine over. I set myself a budget to what I wanted to spend. After I'd gone through and worked out everything I needed to do and everything I needed to buy, it wasn't gonna be worth my while to do it the way I wanted to do it. I could probably make it work with cheaper components but that's not how I do things. A few of you might remember in the CNC video, I mentioned there was a guy in Japan who would ask some questions about the machine, what I was doing with it, whether I'd be willing to part with it or components of it to get a machine of his up and running. So I've been in contact with him. He, he is gonna take a fair few of the parts. He's gonna cover the cost of all the freight, all the logistics. All I need to do is strip the machine down into the components he wants. There is a company here in Brisbane who will then collect the parts from me, package them and send them to him in Japan. Being that this machine is extremely heavy, in the current way it sits now, my yard crane can't move it. I'm not gonna pay someone to come in and move it outside for me, and I'm not gonna put it back on the skates. I'm not gonna talk about the skates. <laughs> what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be removing as many of the heavy components of the machine that I can, but. As I'm doing that, I'm also gonna retrieve the parts that the guy in Japan wants. So some of the parts is the spindle. The spindle goes right back inside the back of the turret. He wants all the lineal rails. So remove the rails off this. We're also gonna remove the rails off the bed and the ball screw that drives the turret in and out. Once I get all the guards off the table, I'm gonna remove those rails. I'm keeping the rotary part of it, the fourth axis. He didn't actually ask for it, but I got a, I got a project in mind for that. And the augers for the swarf screws, we're also gonna keep them because a friend of mine may want them for a machine he has. He does want the drivers out of the old brain of the machine and a handful of other parts off the tool changer. Rather than double handling things, I'll take what I need to to get to the stuff he needs. That will then lighten up the machine. Got a lot of parts to remove. Hopefully once I remove all the heavy stuff, except for the base, I will be able to crane it outside.
sneaky little trick. One down.
what's in there? It's for homie. That's how it goes. That's it. Yeah. Oh, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> Good boy. So here I had to drill out six brass caps on each side. The brass caps are there to protect the bolts that hold down the front of the linear rail. The front section of the linear rail is the only part of the rail that is exposed while the machine is working. The rest of the rails on the machine are protected by guards or aprons. And Swarf would get inside the bolt holes and then jam up the bearing blocks. So here I'm just going to remove all the wiring, I'm then going to cap off all the hydraulic lines, remove the motors that drive the swarf augers, give it a general tidy up and just get it rigged for lifting.
Alrighty guys, so that all went pretty well, getting the machine stripped down and getting everything out of the workshop. And now that the workshop's clear, we've brought the turret back inside to remove the spindle. This didn't go exactly to plan. The ball screw was C solid. Not sure as to why, because when the machine was brought into the workshop, everything was functioning. Wasn't too concerned about it. The guy in Japan didn't really need it. So I just went ahead and cut it with a gas axe so I could then remove the spindle. So now that that's out of the way, we've gained quite a substantial square back in the workshop. So it's about five by four and a half meters. We're gonna have able to be used for something else. We know everyone really wanted to see this project actually go through and everything work out, but it was, it was a business decision that I made that I didn't really have the time to do it. I really needed the space in the workshop and I didn't really need to spend umpteenth amount of thousand dollars just as a bit of fun. There is the upside to this. There is a, a lot of people that are gonna benefit from what we've done. Out of the machine, we salvaged all the lineal rails, all the ball screws, all the bearing blocks. We salvaged the spindle, we salvaged all the motors. There are a massive variety of parts we end up pulling out of the machine. A few of the other parts that are going out to mates of mine that when I told them what I was up to, they said, hey, can we come and grab X, Y, Z? We've gotten rid of the hydraulic system off the machine. We've got rid of a heap of the valving. So that solenoids, the valves, a heap of stuff out of the tool changer went. The wheels that drive the chain, uh, the motor out of that went. Some of the parts we're going to keep, well, pretty much the only part, is the rotary table and the pallets. I have a up and coming idea that when I find time, this one would be far more achievable than the CNC conversion. As it goes for all the cabling and the wiring of the machine, being that it is copper, it can all be recycled, so I do know a guy here in Australia I am going to send that to and he may be able to melt that down into something useful. As for all the bits and pieces that we're not going to be keeping, we're going to get hand them over to our scrap metal recycler. So a lot of people ask us, what do we do with our scrap metal? This is our scrap metal bin. This is supplied to us by our metal recycler. This bin is known as a morel bin. It's about eight cubic meters holds about 10 ton worth of scrap. So anything that is steel, aluminium, not only do we put just scrap steel in this bin, we do put all the swarf coming out of the machine shop goes into the bin too. Anything out of the lays off the mills, all goes in here. So we've taken the weights of the turret and the base of the, uh, the old CNC. Turns out we got about eight ton worth of scrap there. Everything else, all the guards will go in our scrap metal bin. They'll come and collect it. They'll do whatever processing they need to do to separate out the materials and it gets melted down and turned into something else. So all I need to do now is have a tidy up, get everything packed and get it ready to be sent out to where it needs to go. Thanks for watching. Righto guys, so, oh. righto guys, oh. <laughs> but not all is bad, not all is lost, so not all is lost, not all is lost. Okay, you've said that three times, I'm glad it's not all lost. Nothing's lost, everything's good. <laughs> Just your tools are lost. Yeah. Right, so it's this bright, oh, oh fuck, fuck, so, fuck, I've lost it. I lost that. We'll start with its weight. It's extremely fucking heavy. It's a good thing I don't have to give a flying fuck about electrical here. Only the base and... Right, so... Is that a train? <laughs> no, now you're paranoid. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you did hear it. <laughs> How long do you reckon it'll take? <laughs> Hours. Oh. Yeah. Um, are about the same size in capacity. Capacity. Does that sound right? Just say that again. Capacity. What? <laughs> the same size in capacity. So, being that the Mazak and this machine are about the same size in capacity, <laughs> it is very, very recyclable. Re recyclable. Is that a word? Yep, if you say it right. 
I can't say it right. <laughs> We're also going to re re remove... Uh, so all the... Uh, tidy up a little bit, pack everything, get everything ready to go to the place. Fuck. Tidy it up, packed, and get everything ready to go to where it needs to go. <laughs> and then you add up the move... Fuck off, you fucking... What you got? Not the, not that, you dummy. <laughs> He's trying to eat the rope. <laughs> no. He's so dumb. Wait, no. Uh -uh. Stop. 